conviction came up for me, I realized that since so many times I had been told who I was in a negative way, so many times that I had been told that I was going to be dead, homeless, or in jail before graduating from high school, I started to have an identity crisis. And I thought, gosh, who, who am I? Who am I to be successful? Who am I to, to actually do well in school? And I started to, to act out on that. And as I started to worry, as I started to have fears of the unknown, fears of the future, who am I going to be? What am I going to do? You know what happened is all those things that I never dealt with, they started to come back. And they started to eat me alive inside. They started to cause doubt in myself. And when that doubt came up, you know what happened is I started to have suppressed memories that came back as nightmares. Has anyone had that happen before? Something that was really, really difficult and you just forgot about that a long time ago and then things get tough again and all of a sudden it comes back into the front of your mind. The biggest memory that hit me, I was 18 years old, wondering where am I going to go in life, realizing that yes, I've had a stable home, but now technically I'm an adult, so they don't have to take care of me anymore. Where else am I going to go? And this dream hit me. And I woke up in the middle of the night, 3.30 in the morning, screaming, Daddy! I was 18. That memory came back of when my parents first divorced and the restraining order was in place and I was at my church. I was walking through the hallway into the sanctuary and I saw my dad. I hadn't seen him in months. I love my dad. He was always good to me. But with the restraining order, I wasn't allowed to see him. And when I looked at him, I just wanted to hug him. But he looked at me like he was afraid to. And I couldn't hold it anyway, so I ran up and I hugged him and he, and he gave me a hug and, and he said, okay, you gotta go now. I can't, be, I can't let anyone see me with you right now because I'll get in trouble in court. And as that memory came back to the forefront of my mind, I started to act out on it because I didn't understand it. I didn't, I didn't understand like how to process those feelings. And I ended up stealing again. My behaviors got worse and the people who were closest to me, I treated them badly. My very aunt, the one who took care of me and gave me a stable home to live in, I was cussing her out. I was telling her off. I was telling her how grown I am and how capable I am to do whatever I want. And if you want to take my cell phone away, fine. I'll get another job and I'll go get my own. I don't need you. I was telling her that while I was talking to her on my Nokia 8700 cell phone, you know, with the green lights that light up on the pad. I killed that snake game, by the way. Seriously. Y'all don't even know about that, do you? <laughs> I was talking to her on the cell phone that she bought me, driving the car that she bought me back to the house where she had given me a home where I didn't come home the night before when I was supposed to. And as I walked up to that door, it was a sliding glass door in a farmhouse. A lot of times I'm in urban populated areas, like densely urban populated areas when I share the story so they can't picture it. But you guys can picture these farmhouses, right? Right? They, in the sliding glass door and they never locked their door. So there was never any point in me having a key. And as I walked up after cussing her out on this Nokia 87 cell phone, she slid that glass door shut and she locked it. And she had tears in her face. And I knew right then that I had gone too far. At that point, I became homeless. I was kind of sneaking in and out of my girlfriend's house to try and find somewhere to sleep, getting another job to make sure I could have something to eat. And uh, next thing you know, I, I, I kind of thought, gosh, I'm recreating the same cycles that caused me pain. I'm recreating the same cycles I never wanted to be. How many of you have, have family members or extended family members who you're like, gosh, I, I'm going to be the opposite of that, right? 
And that's exactly what I thought I wanted to do, but I, exactly the opposite of what I was doing. And after a few months, I, I realized, gosh, these, these people that had fed into my life, yeah, there's a lot of people that told me I couldn't do it. There's a lot of people that told me I'd be dead or in jail before graduating from high school. There's a lot of people that wanted me to fail just because of who I was. But there was one little person at a time who did tell me, you're awesome. You can do this. People like you who can have an impact in your communities. And because of that, I was able to have a light bulb moment when I realized I was homeless, drinking, partying, not building positive relationships, not going anywhere in life. I had this light bulb moment where, it was, where I said to myself, gosh, I've seen something better than this. I don't know how to get it, but I've got to look for it. 